And we are live. We're live. We're live. All right. Let's can, let's can we fix it? No. What are they seeing right now? They're seeing this, right? They are seeing that. Okay, they're seeing that. Yep. All right. So we, we we don't need to look at all this though, right? Yeah. No, we're good. Okay. Everything's already good. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, out in uh, beast mode land out there watching us on YouTube. Yep. We are here tonight with Jason Warner Smith from AMC's The Walking Dead. The one and only. The one and only, uh, aka Bad Guy Gavin. You know. Not so bad. <laughs> We're gonna get into that. Um, I, I've got a serious question for you, Jason. Okay. Is right. is Gavin right. always mad, or is he always annoyed? I, I don't know. He he always looks like he's like. Serious, I guess. Question now. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, well, here's the thing. I mean, Gavin. You know, it's only so much I can tell you, of course. But Gavin, uh, best I can gather is he probably made a deal with another group at some point, and it didn't work out. And he realized that you know Negan's gang probably came in and took over, and he's like, okay. This, I need to align with these guys. I'm not really on board with how they do things, but it's either that or I'm going to die. And he's, you know, and he's not that much of a hero to just sacrifice himself for his principles, so he's bent himself into this system. And by hook or by crook, he's built himself up to a top-level position where he's been able to remove himself from being around Negan all the time, which mm. is exactly what he wants. And you know, he can stay as far away from him as possible, do what he needs to get done, so he can just get back to his base and hang out. So, and that you really get that vibe too. Oh yeah, absolutely. We've we've had Blaine on, <clears throat> and when we spoke with Blaine. We kind of kidded around saying that you guys were like this, uh, like the, the 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 like the Green Beret group because like Spec Ops. Yeah, the Spec Ops. You guys <laughs> yeah. are never you guys are never seen with Negan in the group. Yep. Always separate, doing your own thing, taking care of business on your end, and doing what you got to do to get by and just hold whatever level you're at. Um, yeah. So I mean that that. That nailed it. Oh, absolutely. That nailed it. Because you definitely give that vibe. 100%. Cool, yeah. Good. Good. Yeah, when uh, I'd read for many different roles in the years prior, and I would always, <clears throat> I always watched, I, I became a fan because I would watch the show so I could keep up with the show. So if I had an audition for the show, I'd know what was going on. Then I got hooked and I just fell in love with the show. Um, not a big fan of all the gore, but I enjoy everything else about it. Um, and I, I would watch the actors who got hired for the roles that I did not get, and I'm like going, yeah, I could have done it, but they're better. They're the right person for that part. They're the right, they should be playing that role. And when I saw what I was doing on as the guy, as, as Gavin, I'm like, yep, they hired me for the right role. And it just, it, I'm very happy with it. That's awesome, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, according to... Caleb and Casey, where I guess we're having some audio issues. No, I appreciate you guys telling us. They said it's coming in super low for some reason. Not again. No, actually, it's much louder than it was before. Oh, much louder. I just turned the microphone, so... I'm just going to double check the sound just to make sure that everything is working the way it's supposed to be. Go ahead and talk real oh, quick. Oh, it's Caleb. See, I mixed you guys up again, see? Here I am. This is Jason talking from Atlanta. Got a thunderstorm coming in. Maybe I'll show it to you in a minute. Where are you guys? You guys are in... What part of New York are you in? We are located an hour and... An hour, hour and a up, half. Yeah, an hour and a half up from New York City. We oh, are okay. in um, Dutchess County. Okay. So up to Hudson? Or? Yep. 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 Exactly. We're right above Westchester County. Okay, um, I spent some time in Newburgh, so I know where that oh, is. Oh, okay. What were you doing in Newburgh? It's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry you wound up in Newburgh. Better. Yeah, I turned this towards the speakers. All right, so we're good on the volume now. I just okay, I turned the microphone towards the, the speakers more of the laptop to pick it up. All right. Um, 
So yeah, wait, hold on. Can we can we veer off track real quick or no? With Newburgh? Rock and roll. I'm ready. So you were in Newburgh, New York. Oh, we're going down that track. Yeah. Um, well, see, we've both lived in this area I, all our lives. Yeah. Okay. We, we know Newburgh. We don't go to Newburgh. <laughs> we don't go to Newburgh. <laughs> right, right. Well, man, trust me, I wasn't going there for the sights. Uh, the um, this, uh, there, there's this thing that I did back in 2000 called the Men's Weekend. And it's held in Newburgh, New York, or at least it was back then. It's not anymore, but they had the old, it was the old, um, uh, one of the Masons. They had a building. Oh. This guy would rent the building yep. to hold this event. And it's a weekend, obviously. And I was up there for when I did it. And then I went up there uh, to help support it several times over the you know last 10 or 15 years. And so I've been to Newburgh four or five times. So, yeah. Okay. All right, so, you know, at least you weren't just up there, you know, clubbing it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, some, the first time I went there was in the summertime, and there was, like, this pier out on the river that had a bar on it with a band. We went down there one night. That was kind of cool. But uh, every other time I've been there, it's always been cold weather. Mm. Yeah. Yep, that's that, New York for you. That sounds like the Newburgh waterfront. Yeah, it probably, sounds like probably he was, like over by like Billy Joe's and stuff like that. And so I don't know if that's still there or not. I have no idea. Mariners, like Mariners, Mariners on the Hudson. Yeah, I think that's where you were. I think I know exactly where you're yeah, hanging out. Pretty sure. Wow. Were you right yeah. down? You were right down by the train tracks. <laughs> is it okay? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, and gullies. Gullies is like yep, a, a an old boat that they turned into a bar and they yeah, just leave it no. on the river all the time. So yeah. All right, so you've been up in our neck of the woods. You know the area, yeah. kind of. That's pretty cool. Really. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, Actually, your uh, your big bad boss Negan there. He he uh, he lives up this way by us. He's got a farm up there somewhere. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Rhinebeck. Talking all about it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Rhinebeck, New York. Him and his wife, and then uh, him, his wife, and Paul Rudd own the candy shop. Right. Candy yeah. Shop. yeah. yeah. Samuel Sweets. I haven't yeah. given up on the dream. To do a podcast from that, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna do that. We're gonna do a podcast from his store one day. There you go. I think we're just gonna go set up shop and be like, "Oh, they didn't tell you." <laughs> <laughs> Better to get forgiveness than ask permission. <laughs> J- JDM approved. Don't worry yeah, about yeah, it. Don't worry yeah, about you it. You know JDM, right? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um. All right. So we got some questions coming in for you. The one from Nick. Yeah. Okay. Um. Just a little heads up. Um. Nick is one of our super fans. Um, okay. h- him and his mother, Jeannie, are two of our biggest fans. Um, okay, is it Jeannie Mercer? Yes. Yes, yes. Oh, hell yeah, I know them. Yep, and you know, they're fantastic people, um, and, and Jeannie made sure that she sent us a, a private message because she wanted to make sure that we asked you this question, so okay. I figured one of the first questions, you know, will be a good one. Um, she, uh, she and Nick want to know, did you read the Walking Dead comics, or did you watch the TV show before you were cast as Gavin? No to the comics, yes to the TV show. Okay. Have you have you have you still not picked up the comics? <sighs> no, it's not my bag. Um, I have <laughs> baby. Huh? No. <laughs> I, I I have I have looked at some of them uh, where uh, people that shouldn't be doing this have posted some of them online. Oh. Yeah, and I, you know, I just was like, I was like, you know, when I got hired, I'm like, you know, I better do more research on this. So I started seeing how do you get these comic books. I ne- honestly, I've never owned a comic book in my life. It's just never been a part of my. Right. I had boys' life when I was a kid, and after that, it was just kind of I never did that. Um, and so I, I, I checked out, you know, three or four episodes. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, magazines. What mm-hmm. do you call them? Books. Yeah. Comic books. Yeah. Volumes. And, um, and, but that's about it. I haven't really looked at them. So then everything you, you dove into was from the show? Correct. I just followed the show. And I've read synopses of, of the comic books about how things are really going in the comic books and, you know, seeing how it's diverged and mm-hmm. how it's stayed the same. Yeah. I mean, I, I knew that Glenn was supposed to be, spoiler alert, dead way before he died and all that kind of stuff. So. Oh, Okay. Yeah, you know, yeah. I've got to get the comic books. Yeah, he Megan does kill him, but then it was sooner or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah, I. I it doesn't exist in that world. Yeah, the main storyline that they changed from that was Abraham's death. Uh, you know, 
that, that, that Abraham was supposed to die sooner than he did, but they wanted right. to give Abraham more of a glorious death scene. Which, you know. which I agree with. I, th- oh, I yeah. think I think that them I'm taking out like Gwen and Abraham the way they did was a pretty good way to do yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I mean, just to kill Abraham with an arrow through the eye, eh? You yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Meh. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um. Did we get anything else? Yeah. So Oscar said Jason. Uh, uh, Oscar Rodriguez the third. He was hey, man, like, <laughs> he said, "Sub Jason, I still need that autograph." LOL. Uh oh. <laughs> oh <Uh-oh>. hey <laughs> I, got, I, got a, I got a stack of mail in there i don't remember one being from him oh shots fired yes. wow shots if, fired uh, send me a, a private message oscar we'll square up i'm sorry i must have forgot i'll definitely get something to you I, I maybe i thought i was waiting on something from you my bad okay all right Ooh. all right, all right. All right. Um, <laughs> so Jeannie checked in she said yeah jason knows our name with four exclamation points so <laughs> They sent me some stuff, and I uh, signed it and autographed it and some stuff and sent back to them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. of course, we have to uh, acknowledge our residential Brit, Lucy. Yes. She's uh, she lives across the pond, as they would say. Right. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, we have a lot of... Uh... <laughs> Jason's like, yes, yes, I know that British chick that stalks me on social media because her and I had this conversation today <laughs> that she stalks yeah, people on I'm Twitter. Gonna, I'm going to be in England the first two weekends of September, but you didn't hear that here. Oh, okay. Oh, so Lucy. Lucy, Lucy, I believe in the in the UK British. There, she got all tweaked up or something. She's gonna say right now. It'll be all weird okay. that we don't yeah. understand. Then she'll call you a slag or something. Yeah, and, uh, I don't I'll, know. I'll be in I'll be in the West Country. They say, as they say, a couple ah. of comic cons happening out there. Okay. Yeah, if they don't get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. When that's one thing we're going to talk about, like we spoke before, um, with some of the uh, Eastern cons and stuff coming up, if you'd like to see Jason at these cons, you know what to do, people. You get at these cons and you tell them, hey, we want Jason Warner Smith there. And we start hammering them with that. And they're going to have to pick up that phone and make some phone calls to this guy. And, no, um, you know. Thank you. Of course. Let's get Absolutely. let's let's get him at Walker Stalker Con. Let's do oh. Philly. Let's do Boston because there's a good chance Chris and I will be there. Yep. With Oscar, okay. you know. Yeah. We're, yep. That's something we're that's something we're working on with Oscar is trying to get yep. to either the uh, Boston or Philly one. Um, awesome. So we'll, we're going to attack uh, these cons with your name. Thank you guys. Appreciate Absolutely. It. No problem. Um, let's get back to the questions for. Okay. Let's go. Um, did you always want to be an actor or was that just something that kind of popped up and you had the opportunity and you're like, yeah, let me try it. Why not? No, I, I, I got into acting by accident when I was nine. Um, oh. we, uh, I got into a, uh, it was back when my, before my mother had to go to work when she was still, an, uh, uh, a homemaker, I think is the right word. <laughs> uh, and she and some other homemakers started up a, kind of an arts group in the county where I lived on northwest Atlanta, Cobb County. And, you know, they had like drama camp for the kids. Mm. And I enjoyed it. It was fun. And I sucked at baseball. I sucked at basketball. This I was kind of good at. And so I just kind of kept doing it. But it was for fun. And then I did it through high school, did it through college. And then I, I got out in an agency in my early Mm. Uh, but there won't be happening here back so every now and then. Oh, you're frozen up. Can you see me? We're good. It it settles. Right, Skype, Skype likes to play games with us. <laughs> yeah. It settles. Okay. Anyway, so long story short, um, I just kept doing theater in Atlanta, and every now and then, you know, like Heat of the Night was shot here. I didn't work on it, but I got a couple of chances at it. There's other silly little shows. And I, I, I did get out of it. Uh, about 2005, I got married and decided to let, let, leave the acting behind for a while. Went after some other pursuits in the business world, and then when the film and TV, sh- you know, world showed up here around 2009, uh, my agent, who I was still with, she said, "Are you in or are you out?" I'm like, "I guess I'm back in." So I got back in and worked hard, and you know, some things started to happen, and then eventually things got really good. So I'm very happy. Because that's that awesome. Is, yeah, because uh, you, you you teach now, so I mean, I mean that's that's a bonus too. So yeah, and I, I you know I've only been teaching for a little over 
two and a half years, and a good friend of mine, a guy named Rob Mello, who, who is the name on the door at the Robert Mello studio where I teach, he and I did a play together five years ago. And he's like, you should come teach. I'm like, oh, Rob, you know, those who can't do, teach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. No. And of course, no. you know, then he, he you know, shot me the bird. And I said, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. And another year went by, and he kept talking to me about it. And I eventually agreed to it. And I started with just one small class. Right. And now I've grown to five classes. So, yeah, I'm excited about it. It's, well, it's, good. It's awesome. You, know, you call that retirement money. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in between jobs and it also helps me be better at what I do right so, right yeah. um, and it helps a lot of other young people and older people become better actors which is really helpful yeah of course that's awesome yeah because yeah. Yeah. you never know you might one day you might be working with one of these people who you know landed something you know I hope so I hope they all get jobs yeah. every single one of them good if you it, and, and also by the way if you'd like to see Jason uh, before October um, we, uh, we got, we got a couple of, uh, upcoming, uh, there's an upcoming movie that you're going to be in with, uh, Tom Cruise. American Maid. That's right. It's called American Maid. Yep. It'll yeah. be in, it'll be in theaters in America September 29th and it'll be That's in the U, it'll be in the UK August 25th, 25th for you, Lucy. Right. There you go. So if you want to see this man in action before The Walking Dead comes back. Go check him out in that movie. There you go. Uh, American Made. Yep. Um, and also, you're in a play. You're doing a play, too? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If you live in the Atlanta area, uh, I'm doing a production of Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross at the Pinch and Ouch Theater in Atlanta. Uh, previews will start in the last week of July. The play will run. I'll be in the play until August 24th, and then somebody else is taking over my role. The play runs all the way through September. Because I'm going to be traveling right. and doing other things. Um, but yeah, I play Ricky Roma, which is, if you've seen the movie, it's the part that Al Pacino played. So it's going to be fun to do this this play. I haven't been on the stage in, well, four years, so I'm looking forward to it. Good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So there you go, people. If you want to check him out, uh, you know, prior to having to wait until October and watch him play Bad Guy Gavin again, and, uh, you know... Not so bad guy. Not, not so bad guy. Give me the can. <laughs> give me the cantaloupe uh, that you owe me. Or so. Uh, sweet. Speaking of the cantaloupe. Yeah. Here we go. Caleb wants to know what was it. Fin- was it like finally doing the cantaloupe scene since you sneak peeked it on his autograph? Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, when I sent him the autograph, on the back of his envelope, I just wrote one cantaloupe, not more, not less, or something like that sent it to him way before the episode aired. So I figured I could get away with that and not get in trouble. So then when he saw the episode, he was like, holy shit. Yeah. Um, that was interesting because I had done two episodes prior to that. All of them, as you remember, were in that parking lot with King Ezekiel and, and Diane, the saviors, and, uh, and Jerry and uh, Elvaro and all the guys. And, um, and Jared. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Joshua Michael, have y'all had him on here yet? Not yet. Mm-hmm. We're trying. Oh, we got to get him on. He's yeah. great. He's fantastic. We're trying. He's town. Uh, anyway, you know they were they were nice scenes. I got the scripts, you know, a week in advance. Not a whole lot of lines. Three four pages. You know, three four minute yeah. scenes. Great. So, in, and as an actor, you're always wanting more. We want more stuff to do. And I was that scene. We were well, those series of scenes. We were going to start shooting on a Thursday. I got the script like noon on Tuesday, oh. and, I, and it comes in. We have to sign into this thing; it's all electronic, protected and stuff. And I like start scrolling, and I'm like, "This is 13 pages." I'm like, "Surely," and I'm like, "On every page, I'm sitting there going through my computer." My wife's next to me. I'm like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> I said, "Be careful what you wish for." And, I'm, and then I panic, kind of said, "It's like I'm shooting this in a day and a half." Yeah. So I actually I called I emailed all my students and canceled all my classes and just stayed home and hunkered down with that script for a day and a half, and it was one of the best days of shooting a television I've ever had. It was fun. It, was, it took two days to shoot all of that because we had the two different scenes, and I called and I didn't really know Kari Payton at the time. Uh, I mean, I, we obviously worked together, so we knew each other, but I didn't have his phone number. Uh, he was kind of on the edge of not wanting to give out his number because of his, you know, what was happening in his life. 
So I wrote to uh, the second AD and I said, hey, I, I need to get in touch with Kari. I want to see if he wants to. I need help. And so he sent Kari a note. Kari called me right up. And now, of course, we're, we got numbers and we talk all the time. But I said, dude, I. And he goes, like, come on down to the hotel, brother. We sat there and ran the lines. And he's like, look, tomorrow, you know, I got your back. You want to run lines? I'm here. And, so, uh, and that's when I really got to know him. And he is, you know, he's a true thespian and a really good son of a bitch. And he, he, you know, he had my back. It was a good day. It was a good day. So I don't know if I answered Oscar's question or not. Or is it Caleb? Caleb, yeah, Caleb, Caleb, yeah. yeah. So I don't know if I answered it or not, Caleb. But <clears throat> it was exciting and fun to do that day. It was, uh, it was a lot of stuff. We had a great director. And um, that bit where they just had me keep my back to everybody for so long was so weird. It was, it was very spelled out in the script. He still doesn't turn around. He still doesn't turn around. And Scott Gimple wrote that episode. So I was like, all right. And then when, it, when I saw it, it's like, oh, I see the payoff now. Got right. It. Okay, cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. Fun. One cantaloupe, no more, no, no less. No less. That's awesome. I, yeah, they, that, that, that speech went on even longer. They cut some of it out, thank God. But yeah, <laughs> like a second time, he would say, I said, do you understand? He was, and he'd say something, I'm like, repeat it back to me. And then I said the whole speech over again. And by that time, the kid would have been dead. So I think that's why they cut it. Yeah. He seems bleeding out. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I mean, and that's, that's um, you know, that's, that episode with Benjamin being shot and then, you know, coming back with the, the next day yep. and finding out that he didn't make it. The way you portrayed um, Gavin's character, like you say, the not so bad guy is where it, I think everyone, it kind of clicked on everybody saying, oh, all right. So he's got, He's he's not in this for the same reasons everybody else is. He's got a yeah. heart and he's willing to, you know, take it out on one of his own if he has to. Yeah, I mean Gavin's extremely conflicted about that sort of stuff. Right. You know, I mean I talked to I talked to Scott Gimple about it and you know, I, we don't have a lot of conversations. I don't ever want him to call me. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if he calls me I'm like not gonna answer the phone. Um but, um, you know, I would send him emails and I'd say, hey, I have a few, I know you're busy, I have a few questions, that, that, that. And that, that was one. I said, you know, what's the deal here? And he's like, you know, yes, Gavin is, and I, you know, I was like, okay, I'm on the right path. Gavin is conflicted, but do not cross him. He will do his job. Right. Now, I may not do it directly, I'll get Jared to do it, but I'll do it. I mean, we were, we were supposed to kill Ben, we were supposed to kill Richard. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to kill Richard. Yeah. That was the instructions. We have shit. Kill that man. Right. And I didn't like it. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to watch it. And then Jared being fucking Jared, you know, kills the kid. So, or just wounds him mortally. Yeah. yeah. And obviously in, in, in the <laughs> Z-Pac, something like that will, and, you know, usually result in death. Um, we have one of your compadres on right now. Yeah. Uh, CJ Rhodes. CJ Rhodes, CJ Rhodes, who's that? CJ, you know CJ. Yeah, I know CJ. I'm just having a hard time putting the face with the name now. He's one of the one of my men. Yes, right? he's one of your men. Sorry, CJ. It's been a while. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. Um. I haven't been, I haven't been on set since October. So okay. fair enough. Did you guys start? Have you been back for filming yet? Can you tell us that or no? I cannot tell you that. Okay. All right. See, that's how that works. <laughs> CJ had the comment of fucking cantaloupes, man. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so, all right. So, uh, getting back to what we were just we, we were just doing, talking about with um, Gavin and his backstory. Okay. Did you develop that? Is that something you know between reading and stuff like that? Did you give him this this kind of backstory? I know we touched on a little bit earlier about you know him as a person, like how you portray him, you know, and everything like that. But you said you, you kind of phrase it that like he came from another group, kind of yeah, thing. So yeah, I I it's funny because uh, Joshua Michael, who plays uh, Jared, he and I were you know we we. we 
we've known each other for a while, but when we showed up on set that day together, it's like, all right, who are we? What are we doing here? What's going on? And we talked about it a little bit, and we made some guesses because at that point, nobody had told us anything, and we don't get the whole script. We just get our pages, and I found out that it's kind of that way with almost everybody except maybe like the very, very top level of people. Um, and they don't get them very early in advance. They don't get them much earlier than we do. Right. Um, anyway, backstory. We were thinking, you know, we must have been, you know, coalesced from some other group that they took over. And we were guessing oh. that Jared must be like either my nephew, my son, or Negan's nephew. And that's why I just haven't killed him already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was our guess. Right. Now... I have since spoken with Scott Gimple, and I have more detail on my backstory, but I can't talk about it. Okay. Um, so the best I can give you is kind of what I told you before. Uh, Gavin probably came from a like a foreman at an automobile plant or a construction foreman, something like that. So he's got leadership skills. He can, he can handle men and was with a another group, obviously, like most things in, in the Walking Dead world, and then uh, they got, you know, they, they failed and got absorbed by the uh, saviors, and due to his leadership skills, he's worked his way up, and he's found a, a position of, you know, respect from Negan, as best as you can get from him, mm. and because the highest honor in the saviors is to be given an outpost, because yeah, that's, that's as good as it gets, Right. and not even, you know, Dwight has an outpost, so, and, and I did ask if he, like, you know, I said, what's my pecking order? He goes, well, it's like Negan, Simon, you, and then some other people, you know. Oh. That's, kind of, that's kind of the order of it. Ah. He said, now, Dwight definitely, you know, spends more time around with the boss, but if it really comes down to it's some sort of military pecking order, it's kind of like that. Because you're kind of like equal with Simon, but Simon's definitely the right-hand man. Mm. You know, you don't want to be the right-hand man. You want to be... <laughs> out in left field, man. But as far as that kind of, you know, uh, higher, that's about as best I can give you. So you, you would be higher than his, his right-hand woman, too? In a rot? Yeah. Yeah, because she doesn't run an outpost. Right. She, she's there. Yeah. I okay. Mean, I mean, no offense uh, to, uh, what's, that, uh, Ron, what's her name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth yes. Ludlow. Ludlow. Yeah. No yeah. offense, Ms. Ludlow, but uh, that's, <laughs> that's what I was told by the man. So, hey. <laughs> I mean, I've never even met her. We've never been on set together, so wow. We have not met yet. It's it's amazing, like how big the world looks to us on TV, and then hearing how the filming takes place, where it's so secretive. Yeah, that like you guys, you know, a lot a lot of actors still haven't crossed paths. That's amazing to me. Oh, I mean, other than the actors, the only thing I can give you a little a nice story here. Uh, now that it's over. My first day on set was for episode. It was we were shooting it at seven oh three. It ended up being seven oh two. It's when the kingdom was introduced, mm -hmm. you know, right after the baseball bat yep. business. And then they decided to move it back because it was lighter, fair. <laughs> and so I'm on set. So of course I meet all the kingdom guys, you know. But Cudlitz was on set, not in costume, of course. Mm -hmm. But Cudlitz was on set. And of course, I didn't know how it all came together, how that you know it ended, and, um, how the seven hundred one was going to go. And so Cudlitz is there, and I'm like, "Hi, Jason, nice to meet you. We had a mutual friend." I was like, "Oh, hey, hey I'm out in LA." He's like, "Oh, good." I said, "So, uh, what's going on?" He goes, "Oh, I'm just here. I'm here shadowing uh, Nicotero for the season, you know, just to kind of watch him direct and edit and all this sort of thing." And you know, then I'm like, "Now that we know, it's like, no, you're dead." <laughs> <laughs> They've got to hide you all summer, so you're here. Right. Oh, I don't know yeah. He stayed there all summer, but he was definitely on set that day in his in his civilian in his civvies, just watching and hanging out, and drinking coffee, and following Greg around. Um, That's but interesting. I, other than him, I briefly met uh, JDM and uh, uh, Norman like at lunch, like hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? And that was it. I saw it. Yeah. no one else that entire season. You didn't even get to be like, I'm your number three guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, didn't, I didn't even know what I was at that point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know, they don't, you know, and 
it's not like they're trying to keep us in the dark. They just, they don't, some of that hasn't been written. They don't know. Yeah. You know, I didn't know if I was going to die in the next episode. You know, uh, you know, you don't know. So, that's you know, that's you know, some. They don't call you at the beginning. Of, they don't call people at my level at the beginning of the season and say, "Here's your arc." You know, I don't get that. Yeah. Yeah. That's very. That's so interesting, though. I, I mean, it's weird. I mean, you could you could uh, you know figuratively speaking, you could wake up one day, you get a phone call saying, "Hey, guess what? You know, next scene you're you're going to be killed." That's exactly how it works. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's kind of yeah, unreal. That's why I don't want Scott Gimble to call me. That's what that phone call is. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. ah. Gotcha. You call me unless I'm dead. <laughs> hey, but you know what though? At least, at least Scott Gimple is calling you. He's not having like an assistant call you. You right. know what I mean? Like at least yeah. one of the head honchos is calling you. You know, but you yeah, know. That's how, yeah, I was there the day when uh, uh, Logan got his call. You know, and and uh, Carl mm-hmm. who plays Richard and Benjamin. And they're like, yeah. Well, so we already we knew it was happening. You know? We said, so did you get the call? Yeah, we got the call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were making a joke. You know, it was just like a. Uh, remember back when David Letterman used to have the cut out cardboard cut out of himself to do the commercials <laughs> for him? It's just like Gimble just hits a button and he goes, "Hello, Logan." <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Oh, That's spot great. on. That'd be fantastic. What do you got for? What do we got? Um, so next question. There we go. What was your funniest moment on set? When you weren't being so not so nice, so mean, Gavin. <laughs> like, was it the funniest? Is that what you said? Funniest? Yeah, funniest. Yeah. Yeah. You got any good classic moments? Anything funny? There hasn't been too much that was funny. Um, well, I'm watching, uh, it was not something that was filmed, but it was something that happened between takes when we were doing this, I guess, 710, because we were shooting that in August in that parking lot. And <laughs> it was blazing hot. <laughs> And Kari, you know, King Ezekiel Kari's out there in a black outfit, knee pads, the hockey pads, a giant black, Ooh. you know, thick wool coat and a giant wig. And they, what they did is they put this uh, cooling vest underneath all of that. It oh. has these water pipes that go all through it. I don't mm-hmm. know if you're familiar with that. Yeah, we've heard. I've seen stuff like that. Yeah. It has a little plug on the back, and in between takes, they'd roll this cooler over filled with ice water, plug it in, and hit the button, and it's like his eyes are crossed, like he was having an orgasm. (laughs) (laughs) It was was hilarious. So, hold on. I want to know something right now, okay? Because, do you know Peter Zimmerman? He plays Uh, Eduardo? We met met briefly once, but I didn't know him that well. He was telling us a similar story, because, okay, it's Georgia. It's hot. Oh, it's hot as shit. You know what I mean? And he was telling us a similar story about how he was, like, when you're at the hilltop, you're literally on a hilltop. Yeah. And he was telling us a story about how he was, I forgot what scene it was, but he was guarding the wall. I think yeah. it was actually when when, when, when they first showed Rick up. Scoop first showed up, and he has the spear pointed down, and he's, and he's you know, yelling at them. And he's like, you know, he goes, they had us up there for, like, two hours. And he was like, we're holding this spear, and we're on, like, three or four layers of... Hmm? Yeah. Sorry, those things are real. Yeah. That's crazy. And like you said, they're wearing, they they force him to wear like three or four layers of clothing. And he never mentioned a cooling system. So I'm almost no. wondering if the producers are favoring the saviors at this point. <laughs> it wasn't us. It was, it was Ezekiel that got the thing. Oh, well, oh, Kingdom. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, um, I mean. He needed it, though. I mean, that, yeah, well, that was, you know, he was just like in a freaking, you know, snowsuit. Yeah, well, not to, not to mention he's got the fake hair on. Yeah. The uh, trench yeah, coat was, and all that other stuff that he wears. Yeah. No, uh, it, was, it was only fair. And, and it's all black. Yeah. So, it, uh, yeah. We have, uh, so... <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, you want, want yeah. me to ask some Jeannie's yeah. question? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Jeannie and Nick want to know, what are you drinking in that never-ending glass that you have? <laughs> <laughs> that is a little bit of dark rum right there. There it is. Okay. okay. All right. All right. All right. There it is. They, just sip, sip it. Oh, all right, yeah, because she says she goes, it's it's a never ending glass of whatever he's drinking. <laughs> just just metering it out. There it is. Not not, not that I'm trying to stroke his ego or anything, but what was it? Was it Jesus that kept filling the the pitcher with wine? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to compare it to Jason to Jesus or anything. Eh, but you know, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um. So, who is your favorite person that you've worked with on the set of The Walking Dead? 
be careful here now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tread lightly. Well, let me. Uh, uh, I can't say that. Um, can't uh, say that because you we haven't seen them yet. Uh, well, so I mean, I worked with I only worked with the the Kingdom guys, mm-hmm. right? So I really spent most of my time, obviously, with uh, with Kari, right? So I would say, you know, with Kari, I really enjoyed. I didn't really have much time with Lenny James, except that one scene, which was just it was just like I was taking a master class watching him. It was amazing. Uh, I, I enjoyed sitting around listening to him tell stories. Really? We didn't okay. have much of a conversation. He has a lot of great stories. He's you know from from uh, England and theater and all that business. And we would just talk. We would talk about the arts and we would talk about plays and all that. And Car is the same way. Uh, I like hanging out. I like hanging out with those guys, which is probably why they're so popular on television because they're just like those guys. Right. You know, they are what they are. Other than him putting on that accent that he does. But that scene where he breaks down and he's with uh, uh, Carol, yep. you know, who lets his guard down, that's yeah. what he's like. You know, that's kind of that's kind of Kari. So uh, I love hanging out with Joshua, of course, because so, he and I spend most of our time together. And he lives here in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Now, we're not hanging out together here in Atlanta much. Uh, we've gone to a couple of the screenings over at the pub that we've uh, kind of put together. Yeah. But he's about you know, 30 miles from me and down in the city. I'm up in the suburbs, so. We uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, those two guys would be the ones, and I, uh, I, I really enjoyed. Uh, I got to get real names here. Uh, Cooper, I enjoyed hanging out with Cooper and uh, and with uh, Carlos and and uh, uh, God Almighty, I can't remember forgetting everybody's real names. Carrie Cahill. Okay. Carrie and I were together before. She's from New Orleans, and so you know all those Kingdom guys, and, and it was fun. We had a lot of fun. I guess like we like. Yeah, you know, we'd be hanging out in the tent together, cracking jokes. It's like, all right, back to hating each other. Let's go over here. <laughs> <laughs> so that explains why you always have the serious face on. Yeah. You kind of have to, like, cover up. Like, serious. I yeah. Just give me my food. I, I got to go. All right. I got to get back to the toilet or something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, you you do you do a great job nailing that character. So. Well, thanks, man. I mean, I have, I have resting angry face anyway, so it works out. Well. Oh, okay, good, good. Yeah, and uh, and forewarning, I am like a super fanboy. So okay. uh, if uh, season eight rolls around and I, and I see you on screen, I will I will probably snap a picture and I will I will tweet the shit out of it and. Yeah, that's that's my thing. You know, I did that with. Uh, Towards the end of season seven, when Peter got hit, you know his his uh scene with Maggie mm. with Lauren, and I'm a huge Lauren fan. I have a huge crush on her, and uh, so when I, the minute I saw that, I, I took a picture, I tweeted the hell out of it, and <laughs> I messaged him. I was like, oh, I'm so I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I can't I can't say specifics, but you know definitely keep watching the show. That's all I can say. Oh yeah, you don't have to worry about that. Oh yeah, yeah no. Man. Every single week we watch it. Yeah, there's nothing. I understand. It's one of the few television shows that people actually, you know, it's appointment TV, which is kind of going away now. Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody I sits down. When and... I was a kid, you know, it was like three channels. It's like, what are you watching? We're watching whatever's on. What do you yeah, mean? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's funny too because, like, when I was growing up. Um, my family, we would sit around the TV, we'd watch, you know, whatever show was on together, and that you don't see anymore. You don't see families watching TV shows together. Yeah. But, you know, Walking Dead, you know, my my extended family and I, we, every single Sunday, we sit down, we watch it together, and we, you know, it's it, every season premiere and season finale, and even the mid-season premiere and finale, we will throw together this huge potluck dinner, <laughs> and, nice. and we just sit down and we enjoy it, you know what I mean? And you don't see that anymore, and it's cool that The Walking Dead does that for people. Yeah, the apo- you know the apocalypse bringing families together, <laughs> <laughs> and tearing them apart. Just yeah, as and fast. tearing them apart just as fast, right? <laughs> um, what else we got? What do we got? How you feeling? You good on time? I'm good on time, boys. Okay, yeah. cool. Let's keep I'm um, not good on run, but I'm good on time. If you want to get a, if you need a break real quick to run if you and need refill. a refill. <laughs> um. What was your first movie or TV show gig? My very first TV show gig 
was, and if you can find it, it'd be a miracle. <laughs> uh, there was a short-lived little nighttime soap opera that was shot here in Atlanta called Savannah back in the early 90s. I'm pretty sure I've heard of that. I've definitely heard of that. I was on it for like, you know, five seconds. Yeah. And I, I mean, I still remember my line because my line was, thanks. <laughs> and I was, I was, a, I was a, a sandwich delivery guy that you know, <laughs> to one of the detectives and they gave me a big tip and I'm like, thanks. And that was it. Yeah. That was, like, that was my first TV show. That's funny. I mean, that was, that was not just some local thing. Yeah, I did yeah. like a little local thing before that. But yeah, that was my first national television show. And I got, that was a long period of time <laughs> before I ever did it again. Yeah. And, and then, was what was your first movie? Mm, first first big movie? I'm trying to think. Um, first movie that you would have heard of? <laughs> 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 Remake of Footloose that they shot in oh. 2011. Okay, yeah, I saw that in your Did IMDb. You watch that movie? Yeah, no, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the cop. I'm the sheriff. I'm the guy that pulls him over and gives him a ticket, and that's me. Wow, see? wow! I never even would have known that. Lawman. Yeah, I was the lawman. The lawman. Kept myself clean shaved, my hair short, and trying to play those kind of roles. By the way, I have to ask. I was looking yeah. at the your every time we interview an actor, I always go on their IMDb page. And just trying to get some background information. Um, sure. you, you were on the Vampire Diaries? Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember the episode numbers now, but I was... Uh, did you all watch that show? I love that show. I watched it okay. every single week. <laughs> well, uh, I don't remember the... What's Paul Wesley's character's name? Stefan. Okay, so when Stefan like, leaves town and goes and hides, he goes to Georgia. He gets a job at a mechanic... Uh, as a mechanic at a garage for two episodes or yep. so, I'm his boss. And he, he like pulls me up by my neck, and then he gets me to drive his car off in the woods and bury this other girl. And she comes back to life and kills me. I remember that episode. I got to kill the next position, though. I didn't get a death scene. I found out. I found out I was dead by watching the show. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Damn. But no, I did two episodes with with Paul. Yeah, he and I had some scenes together. It was—I don't remember what season it was. Six, I think, but I don't remember. I—I th I think it was the second to last season, if I remember correctly. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah, per I'm pretty yeah, sure he it was. Working was. In the mechanic. I was like his boss. Yeah, because that's—that's yeah. when he in the show he switched off his humanity switch and he was he was going crazy and stuff and I believe that's what it was. I, I it's been a while since I watched the show. I did so. not watch that show. I, would, I, I fast forwarded through many episodes in the first few seasons. I auditioned for it a dozen times and never got a part, so I just quit watching it. And then all of a sudden, this one, because it's very rare that an older person gets a job on that show anyway. And so then they offered me this job and I auditioned for it. And they offered me the job and I was like, eh, is it recurring? They're like, maybe. And then I said, can I get a guest star? They're like, no, it's co star. Take it or leave it. And my agent's like, look. It's very rare that a non-pretty person that's over the age of 30 gets a job with a show at all and takes the job. Like, it, all right. it, it, it is a lot of like young, young people, too. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. That's what it's supposed to be. So, yeah. It was all fun. Right. Paul's a nice guy. That's that's awesome. We um, have we have we man we got stuff rolling in right now. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Oscar said, "Hey, Jason, remember when I was your first fan art?" <laughs> I do. Um, as far as I know, you're the only one. I haven't seen any other art. Then we have this is either who Caleb or Casey says, "How hard is it to kill off a friend on set?" Don't know yet. Okay. Doesn't know yet. Mm. He said yet though. Yes, yeah, he that? did say yet. Uh, Blaine checked in. He said, what's up? What's uh, up? We have a question from CJ. He says, uh, have you done any voice voiceover, voiceover. work? I, uh, no, not really. I, I did this uh, kind of a, one of those, what do you call it, a dramatized documentary thing uh, called The People vs. Leo Frank. And I played a character in it, but my character didn't have a lot of lines in it, but I narrated the whole thing in it. That is it. That's the only time I've ever done that. But no voice, like animation work or anything like that, no. Okay, all right. That's um, Kari. Kari's Mr. Animation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Young Justice, right? Is, uh, he's, uh, he's on yeah. that. He's on Cyborg. He's Cyborg. Yes. Yeah, Cyborg. Yes. Young yeah. Justice, yep. yep. I can't wait. Season three's coming out soon. 
Very pumped. Very pumped for that. I uh, he's he's one of those people that I would love uh, where I, that I'm gonna work on reeling in. I'm gonna work on reeling in, Kari. Yeah, I'll see if I can get him on. I'll, I'll talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the record, if you pulled that off, we will drive to Georgia. And we will buy you dinner. Oh, okay. And right. beers and awesome. raw, dark rum or whatever the hell you want. Apparently, okay. Ryan's awesome. got a D. Apparently, Ryan's got deep pockets, and uh, we're taking you out on the. <laughs> <laughs> remember, remember our test call where we talked about overtime. Right. Yes, I do. There you go. All right. Um, oh, we got another one here, Jason. What has been your favorite part that you've played so far, and what part would you? Uh, like to play, I guess. And that came from CJ, by the that way. We CJ. made a mistake. CJ is not one of your guys. He's one of Simon's guys. Yes, yes. Yeah, CJ is one of Simon's yeah. guys. Okay, um, good, I'm like, damn, I don't remember the CJ. <laughs> so he, he, he likes to know, he wants to know, what has been your favorite part that you've ever played so far? And what's like your, your, your dream part, I guess, that you would like to play? Well, my... Well, I would have to say so far, it's this movie that's coming out in September, the American Made movie. Mm. Because uh, I play a guy named Bill Cooper, who was a real person. Um, and uh, it, I mean, the movie's based on a true story, but you know, it's not a biopic. Okay. You know, it's, it's, they're, they're taking a true person's life, and they're kind of, it's kind of like Wolf of Wall Street. They're kind of, you know, making that kind of movie where it's yeah. a real person, but they're having fun with it. They're right, all spin on it. Um, and because I got to do all that flying. I was hanging out with Tom Cruise. Yeah. We were, I was flying in planes. We went to Columbia, South America for two weeks. I mean, it was awesome. Wow. It was awesome. It's funny because, I mean, I was doing stuff. And these, there, there was a couple of guys that are real pilots that they hired to be in the movie. And they're, like, in the movie as actors, but they don't really talk. They're just there. But they're Stan and Bob. They're friends of mine now. And <laughs> Stan and Bob. Stan and Bob. Just like Dave Letterman's dog, Bob and Stan. How, how uh, more generic can you get? <laughs> Dan Kowalczyk and Bob Kintner. Anyway, they're pilots in in, uh, in the Atlanta area, Georgia, and so they got signed on to be quote unquote, you know, stunt pilots. But they are also actors in the movie. So uh, there's another actor who's not a pilot named Mark. It's the four of us were all called the Snowbirds. That's our our, our handle, and. You know, and they're like, Jason, you should have got a logbook, dude. I mean, we could get, you know, you, you've already put in about, you know, 20 hours, and you've already broken about 30 laws. So this is <laughs> <laughs> that is cool. Flying below the deck, we, we got all kinds of special permissions to fly low out on the, around these derricks out in the Gulf of Mexico and stuff. It was crazy. And I was, I was never scared except like, like one little time I got a little nervous. But other than that, it was, it was, it was so much fun. Well, well. If we second, go, if we would be playing uh, right. little jokes on Rectify, that was that was a ton of fun. It was evil, horrible, nasty stuff that I was doing, but just working with that crew was amazing. That was that was a real privilege. So if we go watch American Made, will we see the the part where you got a little nervous and scared? <laughs> maybe, maybe no. I'll tell you what it was is because because um, uh, I was always in the pilot seat because I was supposed to be the pilot, and then the real pilot would be in the co-pilot seat. And whenever they shoot us from the helicopter, you know, he'd just kind of slump over like that. They were going to green screen him out, and I would just act like I was flying the plane, even though he's over there with his hand on the, on the wheel flying. <laughs> um, but we, we were in a, in a Beechcraft Bonanza, and we were taking off from this air uh, field right on the Gulf Coast in Louisiana. And they've got this helicopter that's got this helmet it's from uh heli Net Avi Avi aviation this camera called a shot over which is on the front it's you know this ball mm -hmm. and the, and this guy that it's i've forgotten his name now he's very french but his name's like you know bob or something like that he has very <laughs> name. i can't remember his name right now but he's sitting at the end of the runway in the helicopter like you know three feet off the deck and he's pointing right at us with the camera and we're at the other end of the runway, and I'm on the, you know, I can hear everything. He's like, okay, now you just fly toward me. I will move before you get down here. That's my horrible French accent. <laughs> <laughs> the guy that's the pilot now, this dude uh, used to fly fighter jets off decks in, you know, when he was fighting in Vietnam. So this guy's a badass. Right. I'm like, totally like, you're cool. <laughs> and we're headed directly toward this helicopter. I mean, we're barreling down on it at 100, 120 miles an hour. Right. 
and he pulls up on the stick, and we get within about 50 feet, and the helicopter just kind of goes, <laughs> and my, 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 my eyes bugged out because my sphincter got so tight. <laughs> <laughs> That just sounds that terrifying. Is, that's the only time I'm like, these guys know what they're doing, but Jesus, something could just easily go wrong quickly. Here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that was it. Other than that, I was fine. That was that was the only time I got scared for just it was just for like a minute. I was like, okay, all right, yeah, good. So yeah. let's get out over the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where if we crash, at least I have a chance. <laughs> there was not, we were down in Columbia this one time, and it was the first time that they had me do the flying stuff. When I was in a different plane, then it was a much trickier plane, um, a twin engine plane, and much slipperier. And so, you know, you had to really stay on the stick. And um, <laughs> this other pilot was next to me. And so we're, I'm just kind of looking this way. We're talking to the directors in the plane, the cameramen's in the plane, because they're shooting inside the plane while I'm flying and over this, you know, like this way. And so I'm not really paying attention. I'm just looking ahead and saying, okay, do this, do that. And the guy next to me says, yeah, don't turn the wheel to the left. I'm like, why? Because we don't want to hit the helicopter. And I look to my left, and it's a freaking helicopter. It took me off the freaking wing. Uh, and, you know, 130 miles an hour. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm like, don't do anything. Yeah. Don't hit the helicopter. <laughs> it's crazy. It was fun. It was so much fun. That's a, that's a movie-making no-no. We don't do that. We don't. No, don't hit the helicopter. That's a bad idea. Yeah. That would not be a good career move, personally. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, we have another question from Caleb. Uh, it says, "What is your favorite thing to do outside of acting?" Right now, it's uh, I love riding a motorcycle. That's a lot of fun. I got a, a 2001 Triumph Bonneville. There you go. And, uh, ridden it all across the country and um, riding it around here. I don't get to ride as much as I'd like to. It gets so damn hot and it rains all the time here. But. Yeah. Uh, that's it, that, and uh, doing theater and stuff, but that's acting still. So, yeah, riding my motorcycle. You're going to try to hook up with Norman? No, uh, no. From, from your mouth to, to you know, his ears, that would be the most awesome thing ever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, hey, have your people reach out to his people. He's got a show. I have, I, like I said, I, I shook his hand for two seconds at lunch one day, and that's the only time I've ever laid eyes on the man. So, yeah. Yeah, I would love that. You know, I definitely have dropped a lot of hints and told all my people, publicists, and everybody's like, make sure that that ever comes up. Yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. Be there. absolutely. I'll be there. Hang on, I had to put something in the fridge before it went bad. Sorry. That's okay. All right, what's what do we got? What do we got? If you had to choose a career besides being an actor, what would it God. be? I hate this question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had another. And I was pretty damn good at it. You're going to laugh. Um, I, I actually still own the company. It's And it's kind of sort of still in business. It's a, I own a company called Atlanta Blind and Shade. Okay. Plug. And so remember I told you I got out of the acting business completely and just went into the business world. So I sold blinds, shades, shutters, stuff for people's windows. Oh. And I made a good amount of money at it. And I was very, very good at it. But it bore the shit out of me, um, but I made good money. Um, I built up a good company. When the recession hit, though, it just destroyed me, and I just really never recovered. And I, I had a store, I had employees, I had a van. We had the whole fucking thing. And <laughs> so if I had to, if I absolutely had to, I could go back to doing that, but I would probably just kill myself. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. You know, yeah. The other thing, if I had to do something outside of that, I, I, I'd become a park ranger. A park ranger? There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, That's I'm awesome. I'm an Eagle Scout. I love the outdoors. I love the, I love it out west. I would want to get a job somewhere out west. I'd just sit in the fire tower and look for fires all day. I'd be happy as a clam. Yeah. Until you're yeah. surrounded by a huge fire. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Apparently... Uh, you know. Apparently, CJ's choking on his dinner, apparently. Yeah, yeah he, says, he says he's choking on his dinner right now, <laughs> listening to you selling shades. Uh, <laughs> um, we got another one for you. Uh, what would you consider the worst film you've ever done? I think that came from Caleb, too. Yeah, I think it was Caleb. Oh, Caleb, Caleb, look you, man. You're wearing me out. It could be based on anything, you know. Uh... Well, here's the thing, and uh, there's a caveat with this, because the film is a mess. 
Ah. But my best friend directed this movie, so I don't want to diss him, but it's not his fault. The movie that got released got basically got stolen from him by these shady ass producers and then they just destroyed it and turned it into this disaster. So, all that being said, it's called The Way of War, starring Cuba Gooding Jr. And rent it, stream it. Tell me if you understand what the fuck it's about. <laughs> it's just a mess. It's, it looks slick, but it's just a mess. It's okay. Just, I watched it. I read the script, and I'm like, what's going on? I don't even understand what's <laughs> happening here. So, it's, it's, like, it's, it's, a, it's like two guys like me and Ryan just wanted to make a movie. We're like, yeah, do this shit. That looks cool. Yeah, it's, yeah. that's kind of you know, it's kind of how it ended up. It just it, it never got – it has good acting in it. It has good stars in it, and it just was – it just felt that J.K. Simmons is in the thing. Um, uh, the actor, I can't remember his name now, but – he, he played Link on the Mod Squad way back in the day. He's in it. Cuba's in it. Hmm. Anyway, but it's just a mess. I don't know. Is that the worst movie? Just trying to think. What else is... I've been very fortunate. I have been in some very good movies. Small roles in very good movies. I've been very, very fortunate for that. Yeah. Well, hey. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So, you know, it's all, it's all about the decisions you make. I'll go to my IMDb and look it up. <laughs> 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 what else we got? What else we got? I know we got more. Who is your favorite Walking Dead character? You mean like who? Like not not like I actor or actress. I mean like actual character. Oh, the actual character on the show. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Oh, uh, Denai, uh, Michonne. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. She she is a badass, and I wish. That she was still kind of out there being that badass with her sword and the two dudes on chains and all that. I, you know, I thought that was cool as shit. I always liked that. That that still to this day is my favorite scene. Is when she appears for the first time when she finds yeah. Andrew in the woods. Yep. Yeah. The the the, the, the cloak. cloak and just the zombies behind her was so comic book was it a foggy and tour or something it was like, very foggy yeah. misty like it was it yeah. looked like the sun was coming up a little bit in the background it was it was dim i don't know if it was either setting or rising but by far one of my favorite scenes ever there's an artist that we were friends with and she actually made me a pillow with that graphic on the pillow am i losing yeah. you oh, okay um and it's just you know it's yeah, we're, we're yeah, it's uh, one of one of my favorite scenes ever in the whole show. That's a great, that's a great scene. Yeah. Same here. I agree. And we all know who my favorite character is. My favorite. I'd have to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your 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 favorite character is ninety nine percent every man's favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> I I like him for different reasons. Really? Uh, well, that's part of the reason. Uh, he go ahead. Maggie. Like. Maggie. Oh, well, yeah. Lauren she's Cohen. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah, he's got. She's, she's easy on the eye. Where's the phone? He's got. He's got the screensaver on his phone. No, I don't. No, not no. anymore. Oh, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he goes. No, I don't. Not anymore. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, with thanks for, who's that? Oh, okay. Oh, that's gay. That's oh. our friend Gay Slade oh, from okay. uh, the UK. Yes. Yeah, we just sent out a, a bunch of... Uh, is that rain? No, my, oh. uh, my fan just kicked off. Oh, okay, because I know you said a storm... I, thought, I know you said a storm was coming, so I was like, is that rain? What is that noise? Like, oh, the fan just kicked off. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do we got? Uh, Caleb, oh. uh, Caleb asked, do you accept fan art from fans? Last one, I promise. Who's that? Caleb. Caleb. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I mean, send it to me. I'll sign it. Send me the postage. I'll send it back. Or if you really want to send me something, I would be I would be uh, honored and flattered. That'd be uh -huh. awesome. Yes. There you go, guys. There you go. There you go. Uh, actually, and uh, actually, you're working on something for me right now, supposedly. Who is this? I can't imagine you're going to ask that. What's his What's his? I want to get it right. Uh, he's he does really amazing art as as well. Um, give me one second. I'll, I'll mention say nothing against Caleb. I love Caleb's stuff too. Mm -hmm. What do we got? 
This guy is, I think it's yeah. Mitch Batchley, is that his name? One second. Yep. Uh, what's, we got, what's his what's name? That? Oh, yeah. He does yep. some really... Matthew Batchley, A-T-C-H-L-E-Y. Mm -hmm. He's working on a piece for me right yeah, now. He showed me a pencil okay. sketch. We're going to mention the movie again. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah. All right, Matthew so I mean, Batchley. if you know... You guys can always DM them and, uh, you know, work it out. Stuff like that, right? Yes, Caleb. Yeah, whatever, man. Send it yeah. on. Well, let's make it happen. Yeah. And yeah. Oscar, I'm sorry about whatever I, I screwed up there. I'll really <laughs> take care of I really, I really feel bad about that. Yeah, it's okay. You know, Oscar, uh, he's working on some artwork for Chris and I also. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we, uh, yeah, like, you know, anybody out there that's, that's watching right now, um, and obviously including uh you, uh, Jason, we're going to try to make either the Boston or the Pennsylvania, uh, the Pittsburgh, the Philly, oh, Philly, 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 Philly uh, Walker Stalker Con, and we're going to collaborate with Oscar on that just because he's going to have a booth there and stuff. So we're going to bring ourselves and, and hang out and try to meet, you know, some, some people that are there and everything. Oh. Um, <clears throat> let's. Get the word out for Jason. Get a hold of these these Walker Stalker cons and let them know that you want to see Jason yep. as you know uh, as a, a, a guest. You know, as a guest at these at these cons and Thanks, um, you know tweet them, get at them, let them know that we all want to see him. We all want him there. Um, uh, when you come into London, uh, you said you're going to be in the UK. When's the dates again? Yeah, I'll be in the, I'll be in the West. I can't announce it yet because they asked me to hold off, but it'll be two towns that start with the letter G in the West Country the first and second weekend of September. That's all I can tell you. Okay, so, and uh, obviously, you, once once you get notification that you can release that stuff, yep. you'll let you'll tweet it, I'm sure, and let it all know. Oh, yeah. you'll, they you'll, want you to do that. So, well, that's what happened. They said, please, you know, tell everybody on social media. So, I yeah. started Waiting, not yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, tell them, but wait. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Well, as soon as you. Yeah. The first two weekends of September. Okay. As soon as you're able to release that and we see you post it, we're going to take it and run with it for you and uh, and let everybody know. Um, Caleb, don't worry. Ohio's only eight hours away. We can I'm make saying, it there. Bro, we can do it. It's only a hop, skip, and a jump. Um, it, it, Caleb, might be, it might be a little further for Jason, though. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Caleb's trying to start up. He's trying to do his own startup uh, yep. con in in Ohio. Oh, so wow. he's he's gonna do whatever he can, funding and and I guess loans and, and getting people to uh, participate in it and help out and stuff. So we learned that he's trying to get that together on uh, on the podcast we did <laughs> with him. So um, uh, our our good friend Gay Slade, she said, "I know where. Ha ha. <laughs> I will be at the second one." <laughs> Yes. So I think she figured out the puzzle. Yes, Blaine. And Blaine, don't worry. For any of you guys, yep. and this this is unprecedented. For what all for what you guys do, we always have this little side sentiment with all with the people that come on the show. Anything you guys do, and as far as coming on the show and giving us, you've already given us over an hour, and it's you know I can't wow. I can't say thank you yeah. enough for that. Seriously, thank you, man. Um, you know anything you guys do for us. Coming on, doing question and answers with with, the, with fans and stuff like that is it's why we do it. You know, we um we love it, and we can't thank you guys enough for taking the, the hour out of your life to spend it with us and for people who just love watching you on TV. This is what makes this yeah worth it for us. You know what I mean? We love interacting with you guys, the actors and actresses, and then the artists. You know, and the fans. And that's what really what just kind of makes it all worth it for us. You know what I mean? We yeah. do this from our own time because we want to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Same with you guys. And it just we can't thank you enough. Yeah. Honestly, this is this is our hobby. It's what we enjoy doing. Sure. You know, we we get we, what we get out of it is just pure enjoyment of being able to talk to someone that I wait to see every Sunday. You know, <laughs> and then and hopefully see you on Sunday. You know. Yeah. Um, and in the same go it goes for everybody. Blaine yeah. and everybody we've had time with in the past. The entire you know, crew, man. Peter, uh, James Chen, Elizabeth, Josh, Billy. Josh, Billy. There's it, it's the Walking Dead family. We say it all the time. It's such a close knit family on social media and everything else. And um, 
you know, it's just, it's, it's fun to be a part of right now. I mean, it's a great thing going on and to, yeah. to be a part of it, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. So well, I appreciate you guys watching and talking about it and, you know, everybody, I'm glad that you like it so much. I yeah. really am. I, this is, I've never experienced anything like this in my life before. This is new for me too. You know, I've, I've been an actor I mean, this is the closest thing in the film and television world as you get to doing theater because you actually get to meet the fans and interact with them. Usually on TV and film, it just goes out there and you have no idea. Right, right. And this is nice, and I appreciate Joe letting me come around and hang out with you. Absolutely. We always, like always, um, after season eight starts, um, you know, touch base again. Yep. You know, we like sure. to keep, you know, keep, keep tabs on everybody. Yep. Um, we, we did it with uh, with Peter and Josh and Billy. We had podcasts after, you know, season 7B started, yeah. you know what I mean? And kind of once the premiere came out for, the you know, the mid-season premiere for season 7, we wanted to get them on and kind of, especially because they had seen since then, we wanted to get their opinion on it because stuff like that you can't talk about until it happens. Right, right. You know what I mean? So we want to get their reflection on it. We want to see how people felt about seeing them on the screen and everything like that. And yeah. you know, I, like I told Peter when we did our second podcast with him, I had that, that fan that fanboy moment where I was like, "Hey, that's Peter!" And after my entire family's like, "Who?" And I'm like, "Don't worry about it. I know him. We're cool like that." Yeah. So you know, it'll and it's gonna happen for us when we see you this coming season. You know, and, and Blaine and everybody else. You know, like. People, people that know that we do this stuff, you know, we sit there, we'll be at work and just discussing it, and they're just, they just sit there and like stare at us like we're aliens, you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Listen, we're allowed to nerd out. We can nerd out, you know. It's all right. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, um, we're going to let this man go and enjoy the rest of his evening. Yes, yes. Um, thank you so much for your time. Seriously, thank you, Jason. Um, we can't thank you enough, man. When we sign off, just give us about two more minutes, yep. one-on-one sure. with you. Um, okay. Real quick, real quick, I just want to bring up that we have two confirmed, three confirmed podcasts so far. Yes. Coming up after this, we have, um, I'm drawing a blank. Next I know week, C- CJ's coming up. I know that. Yep, yeah, we have CJ, uh, the, I believe the 28th. We're going to discuss the 28th, CJ, because we might yep. have to change that date. Ryan, Ryan might be out of state. Ryan might be out of state. Um, but we have... Uh, Stevie, Stevie, Terrible names. oh my God! What's She's an author. Name? She's an author. She does <laughs> horror, horror, and um, uh, horror, horror. She does. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> she, <laughs> Stevie Copus. She does. Yep. She's an author. Um, and then we have Oscar coming of up. Of course, we have Oscar. Yep. Um, and then after that, we'll have CJ. We're going to make time for CJ. Yep. And then you know. We'll take it from there. But we definitely do have three more podcasts coming up. Yep. Stay tuned for the dates and all that stuff. Yep. Um, Jason, we'd like to say goodbye to everybody who uh, participated tonight. And Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate you watching. And when I do this, it looks like you have my ears for my ears. <laughs> your ears. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I greatly appreciate you watching the show. And um, appreciate you hanging out with us tonight. And thanks for all the cool questions. Appreciate it. Awesome. All right, people. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate it. And we will be back. Yes, Blaine. Stevie Cobus. Yes. yes. All right, people. Peace out. Later, guys. Have a good night. Peace mode. Peace mode.